Hey friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new painting tutorial. I've been posting these greenhouse window paintings on my Instagram page and I have a similar painting as my Patreon postcard this month and people have been begging me to make this into a tutorial so I'm giving you what you want and today I'm showing you how to paint this dark greenhouse window scene with gouache. Before we get into the actual video I'm just quickly gonna tell you in case you didn't know I have a new Patreon page where I'm posting monthly exclusive tutorials and this flower field was my Patreon tutorial for February and I also posted real-time versions of the paintings I make in my YouTube videos plus some extra ones there as well. So if you want to watch those tutorials or maybe the real-time process of this painting we are painting in this video, I will link my Patreon down below. I included the sketching process in the real-time video and not here, but I just quickly sketched the shape of the window and then added some washi tape to get clean edges to my painting. A good tip is that if your washi tape rips your paper, glue it to the table first to weaken the adhesion a bit. For this painting I used white, olive green, fur green, light yellow, raw umber, black intenso and just a bit of vermilion from Royal Talons. First I painted the background behind the window. I usually like to work from the farthest elements to the closest and in this painting I'm doing exactly that. I'm first focusing on the window and getting it fully done before I'm even touching on the greenery and leaves on top. I mixed this light greenish beige color using white, olive green, light yellow, raw umber and black, just kind of randomly mixing colors until I found this nice, a bit muddy light color for behind the window. In this painting I'm mostly using this size 8 flat rounded filbert brush and these two smaller tempera brushes that I mainly use for the window details and all of the greenery on top. With that light color we just mixed, I coated the whole rectangular area inside of the window frames. Usually with these kinds of light colors you will still be able to see the sketch below, but since I also went later on with darker colors on top, the sketch was barely visible anymore and I actually had to go back to draw on the window panels on later because I didn't really see any of them anymore. When that initial layer was done I started darkening the color and I actually added some greens and some black on top of that color we mixed beforehand for the previous this step and I do this a lot. I'm not someone who often makes these perfect clean new color mixes. I often mix on top of colors that are already on my palette and for these situations it makes sense but sometimes it can definitely look more muddy. Here I was kind of doing that on purpose because it just worked. I added that slightly darker green color on the bottom of that painted window and made the messy greenery like shapes and on top of that I built the color and made it gradually darker and more intense. If you are a bit lost on what we are actually doing here you can think of this as a blurred background. This window will have lots of raindrops and fog so the landscape behind the window is very hazy and out of focus if that makes sense. To achieve that out of focus look with the background I took the same filbert brush, cleaned it up a bit in the water, then tapped most of the water out by pressing the brush into a paper towel and with this damp brush I started blending the green tones to the light background and kind of blending those green colors together. And I'm knowingly making it messy and muddy, I'm not going for any kinds of perfect blends between the colors. The idea is to make it more ambiguous and slightly more blended. Maybe behind the window we have some trees or some sort of garden or other types of greenery and this is the technique to achieve that look. I also added that darker color to the top left side as well and overall made the bottom a bit darker and colorful. Since the background was so dull, I mixed in some more of that fur green to make some of the greens pop a bit more so it just looks more lively and vibrant together. After the background was finished I mixed a color for the window grid. I chose a very dark brown color and I also added a small bit of vermilion for a little pop of vibrant color. So I used black, raw umber and vermilion.
If you want to simplify the grid and just make it symmetrical with perfect squares, you can do that, but I made it a bit more interesting by basically adding another one of those vertical lines or grills there instead of having it be totally symmetrical. To create sharper and more perfect lines, you could totally use washi tape to tape the edges, but I somehow still prefer just freehanding everything. If you get any wonky or imperfect lines, you can just cover it with those raindrops and fog we are adding on top later, and it's also very much okay if they aren't perfect anyway. I'm often very happy to do my best and not spend time worrying about all of the tiniest details that you might not even notice in the end. But that being said, this step is very tedious and not my favorite part of a painting like this by any means. I was using a smaller brush so I can be as detailed as possible and create these thinner lines, but I also made some mistakes and wonky lines myself, as you can see. I fixed it by painting it straight and then later covered the uneven parts and extra lines with the background colors and it it instantly looks better. I also darkened some of the areas in the window grid that were on top of those darkest areas of the greenery on top, just so that you could see them a little bit better. And now we are at the most satisfying part of this whole process, which is adding those details on the window panels. So think of it somehow like this. The greenery we added first is out of focus and now these details that we are adding onto the window panels, this is going to be very sharp and in focus. So there will be a nice contrast between the background tones and then the details on top of the window. These very sharp details on top of the window will definitely complete the look. I again have this smaller brush and I mix this very light color by mixing some white to the original greenish background color we added first. I didn't add much water to this mix so the look would be more dry and textured. I'm making these like dragging strokes along the window glass, especially along the darker parts of the window around the window grids to make it look more humid and foggy. And at this moment you can probably start to see how the background isn't as visible anymore so again that blending and color variation really paid off now that we are adding these details on top. Along those little lines of fog and rain, I also added small dots of raindrops to the window with the white paint to make it look more interesting. And after I also added a small darker outline on the top of those white dots to just add a bit of shadow to the raindrops and make them pop out more from the background. If this part looks a little bit confusing or hard to make, don't worry, you don't have to make this step perfect. I think that the most important part is that you choose a color that is much lighter than the background and just make some sharp little details on top because that really is going to make this whole window scene just come to life. When I felt like I had added enough details to the windows, I actually started making the frame for the window itself. And this is a part that is kind of in the background of this painting, so you will not see this that well. So I wouldn't spend too much time on this part, honestly. I just mixed some white, some raw umber and that vermilion color to make this very light beige color. And then I just added that around the window that we just painted. I also took some of that darker brown to add just a few details along this window frame to just make it look a little bit more old and a little bit worn out and maybe that there's some cracks within the window frame. I was using that same darker brown that I used for the grid to just kind of outline the window view so that this window has this like outer grid as well. I also took my damp brush and just blended some of those window frames details together so they don't look as sharp. But now we can finally start focusing on actually making the greenery on top of this window. And even though I said that those window details are kind of the most satisfying part, I think that this is definitely that part that brings all of this together. I mean, there is a big chunk of white left in this page anyway. So I mixed a lot of black, fur green and olive green together to make this very dark, almost black, dark green color to add to this whole white section of this painting. 
I did make a little blend from this lighter color to the darkest color in the edges of the painting. I did mix some of that darker color on top of that lighter brown that was already on my palette so I could get a little bit lighter color that I could add around the windows. So when we have light coming from the windows, obviously those parts that are closest to the window will also be a little bit lighter in color. So I just made a little blend from that lighter color to the very dark color in the edge of the painting but I do have to say that I love starting things with this kind of darker base it just gives me so much freedom like I said in my sketchbook video as well that I just shared it's so much fun to start on painting on very dark surfaces because you really can do anything you want so I really enjoy making these kinds of greenhouse paintings where I can have a very dark base for all my greenery on top but yeah, you can definitely see that lighter color next to the window here. And even though it's not a big step, I think that it does still make a very big difference when you start layering those leaves on top. So as you can see, I actually forgot to press record when I started making this. So I already had done a few of these leaves here, but now I'm using my Etcher Lab round brush. This is just a very basic brush that I sometimes like to use when I'm making these loose background layers with greenery. It just works really well. So I added some more olive green, fur green and light yellow to the background color we just made. So we have this just slightly lighter color of green that we are going to be painting with on top of that darker color underneath. And again, you will barely see this kind of layer because it's still so dark, but it's just slightly lighter compared to the background color. So you will see it through and it will make a difference because that will definitely show you the depth of this painting. As you can see to the bottom of this painting, I'm not even really painting leaves. I'm just making these very messy strokes and just kind of blending these colors to the background. And again, it might not be the biggest difference, but it will be important when you start to add those lighter colors on top because you will have that depth that you didn't have before. And now I'm starting to add slightly more lighter tones. So I'm adding more white and olive green to my previous mix. And then I'm starting to also make these slightly sharper shapes of leaves. So instead of just making those blobs, I'm still making some blobs for sure, but I'm starting to also make a little bit more some sharper leaf shapes so that they will start to pop from the background a bit more. Again, this is kind of similar as what we did with the wall. So the slightly lighter color is next to the window. We will also start doing that with the leaves. So obviously the leaves will have more color in them and they will be a little bit lighter the closer they get to the window. I also added some little lines in between the greenery here in the bottom just so that there would be more texture and an interesting look. I also changed my brush into a smaller one as you can see so I can start working with more detailed shapes for the leaves and I'm really starting to make them a little bit more crisp. And even though I'm someone that makes tutorials, I still sometimes kind of jump between steps and I'm like, well, let me do this one and then just continue with what I was just doing. And we are doing exactly that now because I took the same brush that I was using and I was now dipping my brush into that very dark green that we were using for the edges of the wall. So I'm starting to make these silhouette-like leaves and branches on top of the windows. And I know this is kind of the opposite of what I was just saying because I said that we are making the leaves lighter the closer we are to the window and yes we are still doing that but since these leaves are straight on top of the window and that super light color they look more like silhouettes so I'm making this set of leaves now that are top of the window a little bit darker. I'm also adding some little vines and some branches along the left side of the window just coming down and also to the bottom. I think that this just makes it look more interesting and it will also have some more shapes rather than just having those leaf shapes on top of each other. This is also a little part where I ended up losing some footage because I was painting some more of these like hanging leaves on the top left side of the painting but I realized that I did not film that because my phone was kind of positioned a little bit wrong but you can see how they turned out. I was definitely using the same technique as before though so I hope that you understood what I 
I was doing anyway. So yeah, I think that the most important part on a painting like this is to just make it look like there's a lot going on and it looks textured and it looks interesting. So I try to make sure that there isn't that many spots without leaves, especially close to the edges of the window. I really try to make sure that it looks full and lush and just like there is lots of these branches everywhere because then it just looks a little bit more realistic. I mixed some light yellow and white on top of the color that I was using previously to start making this slightly lighter color. And with this, I started making these leaf shapes onto the left side next to the window. And this is what I'm talking about when I said that the leaves are gonna be lighter the closer we get to the window. So these are now those leaves on top that are getting most of that. I don't know if it's sunlight because it's raining, but at least natural light. So as you can see, I'm leaving mostly that edge of the wall or edge of the painting very dark and I'm not really adding that many lighter colored leaves there. So I'm again focusing on mostly those parts that are next to the window. And when I'm starting to add these leaf shapes, first of all, I know that this part can be much harder than it looks because this is exactly something that I would have struggled with when I started painting. So if you are struggling, don't worry. But I think that what I try to do is kind of think about these as branches instead of just individual leaves. So you can see that when I'm making a leaf, I'm kind of adding another leaf that is also growing from the root of that first leaf. So instead of just making singular leaves everywhere, I'm kind of trying to make them in these little bunches or some sort of these sets of maybe three or four different leaves so it just looks more full so for example if you look at a hanging plant or a vine or something it will not just be like a slim branch with some individual leaves on both sides it will have spots where there are some leaves on top of each other and some that are growing to all kinds of directions so instead of just making those individual leaves again i often added one that was kind of like pictured from straight in front of it so it was kind of this oval shape and then I added maybe one or two others kind of growing from the root going a little bit more horizontally if that makes sense so instead of seeing those leaves straight from the front you will see the side view I feel like I'm the worst person explaining this but I honestly don't know how to explain this any better but try to think about all these shapes these leaves can make when they're going into different directions look at your plants that you have at home I actually have a golden pot in front of me and these are definitely not those basic leaf shapes that you would maybe make if you would just quickly think of a plant. So think about all the directions and things like that so it will look a little bit more organic instead of just having those random individual leaves pictured from the front. <laughs> I don't know. I hope that that made sense. But yeah, anyway, after that ramble, you have seen me just adding some more white and some more yellow to that color and just adding some more of those sets of leaves on top of each other. And I think that again, layering is key and just adding these leaves on top of each other will just make it look so much more lively and interesting than before. I love how this painting turned out exactly because of the fact that the edges were still so dark and it was so dependent on the light. And even though we are adding that lighter color next to the window, I'm also still keeping some of those silhouette-like branches and leaves there with that darker color because I think that they just look really dramatic and really good next to those very light colors of green. And as a last detail, I mix some green and some yellow on top of this white paint to make this very, very light green color just to add some highlights next to the window. This is the lightest color that we are going to be adding and I wanted this to really make those leaves pop and just make it look extra good. I also added that lightest color next to some of the vines or branches again to also make them pop a little bit more as well. But with that, we are getting to the end of this video. I hope that you understood what I was talking about. Just a reminder, even though I am teaching you guys here, I'm still sometimes a little bit confused about what I am doing and it's not always easy to say things out loud, especially in English because it's not my first language and explaining what you are doing while painting is sometimes extra hard. <laughs>
But again, I hope that you really enjoyed watching this video and you had fun if you just watched this, but also if you ended up recreating this yourself, I hope that you really enjoyed your time. It's the most important thing. Again, if you want to check out that real-time video of this painting process, it is up on my Patreon, which is linked down below. I also have my monthly Patreon postcard there, which is pretty much this exact painting. So if you want to get that, make sure to sign up during February and I will mail it to you. But if you like this video and you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and leave a greenery comment down below so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!